I'll divulge a little secret about myself. I have two personalities. <laughs> Yesterday you saw the ebullient Steve Finney talking about the amazing things you can do with a ketogenic diet and inflammation. Uh, today you're going to meet the grumpy old intern of Steve Finney. <laughs> um, I view fasting as a, as a dual-edged sword. There's a very sharp front edge of the sword that you can use for mobilizing fat, losing weight, increasing ketone levels, and the benefits of autophagy and all the other things that we're learning about the effects of fasting. But I have seen in a number of instances in my career the sharp backside of the sword, and that's what I came to talk about today. Uh, so it isn't that the others don't exist. I want to put, keep this in perspective and establish maybe a little bit more balance than we've seen in some of the presentations on fasting. There are many definitions of fasting, and uh, I want to focus mostly on the highlighted area here. I understand you know, there's a lot of information on benefits of partial day fasting, um, but there aren't that many studies that show dramatic effects. Um, and particularly, I want to focus on longer-term effects, not just short short-term effects. Single-day fasting, again, I, I'm agnostic on this. The, the research is, I think the really good research is, is in the process of being done in terms of large, well-controlled cohorts. Um, uh, skipping over to 5-2, um, the, the, the question that I have is, if, are those two days together, you know, simultaneous, and is it true fasting or is it just reduced um, uh, energy intake on those, quote, fasting days where people eat much less food on those? to be substantially hypocaloric. But the area I want to focus most on is, is um, uh, multiple day fasting. And my definition has more than 48 hours of going without eating uh, any calories of any, any form. Um, and there are a number of discussion points I want to focus on in, in this brief talk. Uh, so the first one will be the effects of fasting on metabolic rate. Now I'm going to apologize because I can only show you old data. And the reason is that the data that was done in the past has stood, up, stood the test of time, even using more uh, antiquated measures of, of determining oxygen consumption and CO2 production, or even uh, direct calorimetry where you actually measure the heat production by the body. Those, those results that were produced before 1980 have stood the test of time. Uh, so this is a uh, composite diagram that was published uh, in 1991. Uh, and this is a composite of multiple uh, individual subjects uh, being studied over periods out past 30 days. Uh, and this shows the uh, basal metabolic rate as, present, as percent of the predicted value based on the Harris-Benedict equation, which, which was published in 1919. So this is antiquated data, but as I said, it stood the test of time. And what you can see here is that when you look at the change in, in basal metabolic rate, that as you get out past five to 10 days, there is a substantial reduction in basal uh, metabolic rate and total energy expenditure analogous to that. And the value when you get out in the range of uh, 30 days, you're down to about 25% uh, a, a reduction in resting metabolism, uh, which is a very substantial reduction in resting metabolism. In the yellow highlighted area up here at the top, uh, in the first day or two, there's actually, in some studies, particularly done in lean people, there is a bump up in resting metabolism. And that's due to the catecholamine response uh, of, that's needed for, to stimulate gluconeogenesis. And so you actually have a brief uptick. And so I've heard people say, well, fasting increases your resting metabolism. And I say, yeah, for two days. <laughs> and then what? And I think that's an important observation. Um, so this is, that was a summary of very old data. This is a study published by uh, a German group uh, in 1981. Um, and what they compared here was total fasting to protein supplemented fasting, a very low calorie ketogenic diet. And these are differentiated substantially in terms of the effect on resting metabolism. <laughs> And as you can see in the highlighted sentence here, basal metabolic rate showed a significant decrease, 25%, during total fasting. Um, uh, and this was a, for a period of 30 days. There is this, this body of data uh, that, I, that has not been refuted by, by, let's say, countervailing science.